pop into the comments. Tell me that you're here. I see Heather Jenkins has joined us. Uh, we've got Katie. Katie's here. She got her binder today. Yay! Woo -hoo! I'm so glad, Katie. That means that you're going to be joining us the Ultimate Paper Workshop, and I'm adding on another bonus. So if you've already bought your Spark Life binder, you're getting this. And anybody who buys it before the end of the night Friday is also getting yet another bonus. So Katie, you're going to get another one that I think is going to help everybody. If you don't have time to put together a binder and it seems overwhelming, like this bonus is for you because I wanted to make it easy for everybody. So I'm glad that you're here. Hi, Rita. She says, hi, Suzanne and all. I'm here, but working in the background. Arr, didn't want to miss today. I'm <laughs> so I'm glad that you made us part of your work day. That's fantastic. Thank you for that. I think this bonus is for you. Oh. Yep, my volume is working. I see you got Dottie from Southern California. Hello, Dottie. Nice to see you. We got Linda's here. She saw the Life Finder last night. She wants to know how much it costs. This weekend, well, this week and weekend, it's $99. After Sunday, it goes up to $125. So just a one time cost. Super easy. Uh, Heather, she's here just getting home. Hopefully, her neighbors don't worry how weird she is for watching. <laughs> me on the way up the stairs. That's awesome. That's dedication right there, Heather. That's amazing. So I see we have Karen is here. Hi, Karen. Fantastic. I We have a great crowd tonight. You are on fire. Anytime that I say something that you really like tonight, please show me some love with the hearts and the thumbs up, but also can you just maybe post some of your aha moments or your favorite tips? Just rephrase them in the comments. Not only will that save for you to go back to later if you were trying to remember what resonated with you, then you can just hop back on the video post to see that for a little bit. But also, it'll help other people see some of the top things and help me know what helped you out the most. So, if you can just kind of restate your, I call them tweetables, your tweetables, whatever that concept is, if there's something that just resonated with you and was an aha, either from this video or a previous one, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. So if you don't already know me, I'm Susanna Kay. I host challenges. That is one of the main things that I do. I do challenges within the free groups in the Challenge Network and on Facebook sometimes. And I do challenges in my paid group every single month. They get, you know, at least one challenge a month, sometimes more. And they're all about doing things in bite-sized pieces. Now, this challenge is our Conquer Your Papers Challenge. These are bigger bites than usual. That's why it's only five days, because I don't want to stress you out longer than five days with some of these larger tasks. Most of the challenges are a super 15 minute or less task that you can just knock out. Um, and a lot of the declutter ones, it's super fun because you could post your photos and everything like that. They're amazingly fun. This one's amazingly fun, but a lot more work. And I know that, so that's why I only did this for five days for you. Uh, the other challenges, if you join me for them, are definitely much more bite-sized. Uh, but there's just no way to make this bite-sized unless I did it over two months long. I think you'd kill me. <laughs> you all would just pack your bags and leave me if I tried to do two months of a paper challenge. You'd kill me. Um, so Katie says, binder hack. She put it on her USB drive and printed it out from the machine at Staples. It has an option to print on three-hole paper. That's fantastic. Yes, I didn't even think about that. I've bought three whole paper for mine before too. Great comment. I, I need to remember to share that with people. Um, during the challenge, like I mentioned, it ends tomorrow, Friday, is the last day of the challenge. So you've made it over the hump. All the really hard stuff is actually done. So today's a lot easier. Tomorrow's going to be easier. You just need to keep going and moving forward, and then you have the weekend to catch up. So a lot of times if you have more papers than just a box or two, then it might take longer than the five days, and that's okay. You've got the whole weekend, and you can save all those emails I sent you. This is why I send them by email. You can save them and work on it beyond the weekend as well. Plus, if you're in the challenge network, I'll leave the challenge up for a little while longer in the free part, and then the VOPs will have it the whole year. So there's absolutely no feeling behind in this challenge. You're never behind. You're right where you need to be as long as you're taking some form of a step forward, even if it's just watching these videos. As long as you're taking some step forward, you are totally rocking this, and you will get there. So don't lose hope and faith. I love hearing all of your progress. I love hearing the baby steps, and I love hearing the massive steps. It's just been great. So this week, actually, 
just recently, I think today and maybe last night, there were a couple of people that I just wanted to call out because they've been doing really good. They posted in the challenge network. Um, so I want to say, hey, Katie, I know you're on. I saw that you posted already in the comments. You are totally, you mentioned that you are the administrator from the personality quiz, which I totally get. And you are rocking using the paper policy. She posted in the challenge network that how she's using her paper policy and she's doing that one bite at a time as well. So she's not trying to do the entire policy all at once. She's kind of, you know, writing down what her plans are and then she can go back to it and do another step of it and another chunk if she wants to. She's not stressing herself out. Hopefully, I don't think you are. You don't seem to be stressing yourself out too much over it, but you're using that paper policy brilliantly. So I loved reading that. And she also, um, I loved, I, we heard the term Netflix and shred, <laughs> going to Netflix and shred tonight. And that's, I think one of my new favorite terms. Now, Sherry just joined the VOP membership. I'm so excited. And she was asking if we were going to have a command center challenge. And I thought that was a great idea. So yeah, we probably will. I might even add that for next month or December or something in the VOP membership, because you all have your own additional bite-sized challenges, and that would be a super fun, tiny bite one that we could do. So thanks for that idea, Sherry. I see Dottie just asked in the comments that she got in on day three of the challenge, how can she get day one and two? Great question, and she says, how do I get on the challenge network? Let me post, um, I'm actually gonna just type it right now in the comments, and then I'll try to post it in the description later. Um, the link, did I spell that right? Bad eyes. Old, old eyes. Okay, so Dottie, I just posted the link. It's myhomechallenges.com. That was a terrible link, actually. I the com comma. So you probably can't click it. This is why I need glasses, don't I? Okay, I have contacts. I just posted the link, Dottie. When you go to that link, you can join the join the free section, and that free section will have in the topics. You can go to the paper challenge topic, the daily tasks, and they will all be in there. All the replays of the videos, all of the tasks for the challenge, it's all gonna be in that free section. If you wanted to hop in for the future challenges that the VOPs are gonna do, then they you wanna join that membership portion um, as the VOP membership, because you'll have extra bonus challenges, plus there's already some printable downloads there for you from this challenge, you guys get some bonuses. So it's already there for you. You're welcome, Dottie. Uh, Joanne says she's a little behind. She's doing sorting, saving, and tossing, but she's still listening. Awesome. Love you multitaskers. You guys get through a lot during these videos. I also loved Anita in the group. She created her own special folder in the action file. So remember that we have our six main folders within our action file. And then she created one of her few special ones. She named it to consider for the future, which is fantastic. She puts all of her ideas and her plans to possibly do in the future in her to consider for the future folder. So I just wanted to share, that was a great idea, Anita. Thanks for posting that in the group. Um, you guys all have such fantastic ideas. I love it when you post in the group. So tonight we're talking about that to enter folder. I just put this down, but I should have kept it up. So the to enter folder can scare people a lot but it's really not bad at all. This folder is that the easiest place for all those little shreds of paper that you write a note on <laughs> for information to enter somewhere else. It gathers all those little shreds of paper that are just information only, and you can put them in here. So the purpose of the to enter folder is if it's just information that you need to enter somewhere else, it goes into enter. If you have to do something with it, then it might start in your to do folder, and then you can do whatever it is, make that phone call, schedule that appointment. And then once you're done, that information can go in the to enter folder and you can enter the information. If it's contact information, whatever it is, enter it in the wherever it goes. So it can hop around. So we're talking about our to enter folder and where to enter a lot of things that land in that folder. So contact information, passwords, ideas like Anita's idea with the to consider for the future folder. Well, what about if you don't want to do those ideas right now, you can put it in a to, to consider for the future and if it gets full, do you want to save them somewhere else? You can use your to enter folder for that and then 
to wherever you're going to say your ideas. Inspirations are a good thing to put in your to enter folder, like quotes and little verses, poems. So all of that, we're talking about how to manage the stuff that's in our to enter folder. So that way we know that there's an action plan and that we can find it again later because it's scary thinking that sometimes you might enter something but forget where you decided to enter it and never find it again. So a lot of times you still hold on to the piece of paper because we're afraid that our memory won't serve us well. Um, like I mentioned before, remember, if you hear anything tonight that's kind of an aha moment or a favorite tip, do me a favor and kind of rewrite it in the comments so that way I can see what you're liking and what resonates with you and I can share that type of thing more often. And also give me love whenever you like something. Hit that heart and those thumbs up anytime that you hear something that just really makes you happy or that you're loving like that. See, thank you. That just makes me so happy to see all those things flying on my screen. I'm, I'm such a sucker for those things. I like unicorns, I like gnomes, and I like little happy faces and hearts flying on my screen. <laughs> I see Mary Hendrick is here. Hello, Mary. It's great to see you. It's been a little while. Thank you for the love. Fantastic. Okay, so I mentioned we're doing the to enter folder. So some of the things that go in the to enter folder, feel free, write in the comments some of the items that maybe hit your to enter folder. But some of the things that I see the most often are, like I mentioned, contacts and passwords, ideas, quotes, inspirational things that you want to keep for later, um, sometimes lists, packing lists that you might want to reuse or any type of a reusable list that you want to save. Website, like websites to visit. If you have a great idea for visiting a website. Um, event information with notes. If you put any event information in your to enter folder, then that's a great place for it. Thanks for the love. Uh, important account numbers and important data, all of those like super important things like social security numbers, ID numbers, account numbers, important uh, company information or medical information that you just need to enter the information somewhere, that hits there a lot. Uh, sometimes craft ideas, recipes might make it in there, some business ideas. So all of these types of things I've seen thrown into the to enter folder. If you think of any others, like I mentioned, throw them in the comments below because right now I'm just thinking off the top of my head and with the couple of bullet points that I wrote down to try to remember what all hits there. Um, Karen says that she's not seeing comments. It's stopped at Dottie's. Thank you. If you're on your computer, you might need to scroll down. If anybody knows how to help with that, I know that last time somebody had that issue, we had a couple people who could kind of help in the comments help her, um, but I'm not quite positive. You might need to reload. If you're looking on mobile, then maybe scroll, force it to scroll. But hopefully we can get you seeing comments, Karen. Um, Mary says, hi, Susanna. I see Rita, but what do you do when it gets thicker and thicker? How often should you clean up that folder? Great question. And Dottie says, address changes. Yes, address changes hit the to enter folder a lot. Uh, receipts to enter in the check register can go in the to, to enter folder. Pauline says, yes, those are great. So these are fantastic, keep them coming. Any other ideas that you have? Now Rita, you asked what to do when it gets thicker and thicker and how often should you clean it up? That's completely a personal choice about how often you should clean it up. I personally wait until it's pretty full or until I happen to have time. So when it starts to bulge, then that's when I realize that it kind of needs to be thinned out a bit and I look for time in my schedule to be able to go through some of it. The nice thing is also a lot of times when I do get back to it, it helps kind of purge some of the things that I thought I needed. And I realize that I'm not that interested anymore. At the time I thought I needed it desperately and then later, maybe not. I'm not super excited about it. So it's an extra bonus of a secondary purge before it hits any of your systems. But up to you, if you wanna create a habit once a month, if you wanna create a habit once a week, the nice thing is, if it's not in whatever system that it's supposed to be in, like say in your phone contacts, then you know it's still in your to enter folder. Not a problem at all, so everything's always safe. Do it whenever you feel is good for you. Um, and we are gonna talk about what to do when it gets fuller and fuller and how to empty it out and get things entered. 
I see Karen says that she's on her iPhone, but it's not scrolling down. If it's not scrolling down, you might need to reload. Your iPhone might just be having an issue. Uh, it sounds like your, your iPhone is kind of frozen, or maybe you just need to you know, close it all out, open it back up again, use that link that I've sent out, or go back into the group. Um, Mary says, if you get a lot of information that goes to that folder, maybe go through it weekly. If not too much, goes in there monthly. Yes, exactly. Great, great way of putting that, Mary. And Jana, I just got booted up. I finally got back here. Yeah, so Karen, there might just be Facebook does this sometimes, which is why I'm trying to change over everything. Thank you, Jana. Sorry that you got booted out, but you might just have a Facebook issue. So thanks for keeping with me, though. So let's go through some of these to enter items one at a time. So the first one that I mentioned was contacts. And a lot of us know, you know, the whole iPhone contacts. I love entering things in iPhone or Android, whatever your phone is, Google Pixel, contacts, because then it's always with you. Now, we will talk about paper options as well, because I know not everybody loves technology or trusts it, so stick with me. This is not all paperless. But to start with, using your phone contacts is great. If you're entering contact information, you can also, in the different fields within your contacts app, you can use them differently. Just because it says company name does not mean that you have to actually enter their company name. A lot of times, I want to be able to search for things. So if I'm, for example, entering the business card for my plumber, I am not likely to remember his name or his company's name when there's an emergency and I need a plumber. So I need to be able to look for the word plumber in my phone to find what, where my plumber is, where that contact information is. So in the company name, I might write his company name, but possibly his last name, I might write, you know, like Ken Smith and then plumber. So first name Ken, field, first name field Ken, last name field Smith dash plumber. And then in the company name, I'd write the company name or maybe the company name dash plumber if it does not have the word plumber in it. I also like to enter more detail for myself. So over time, I don't always delete my old contacts, so I would probably not just write plumber, but I'd write plumber 2019, or plumber house on Hope Street. So that way I know, is this my current plumber? Is this the one that I'm using right now? Or is this one from a while back? So use those fields in whatever way work for you, but make them searchable by adding your own information when you add that contact info. And the notes section is a great spot you can Take, um, write the website address if you want. Fax numbers are in the contacts. You can put fax numbers and websites. You can write in the notes anything special about that person. So a lot of times if I'm adding a contact of a person I've met before but I don't see often, then I might even write what their kids' names are and their ages or what their favorite things are or you know maybe doesn't like shrimp <laughs> if we go out to eat all the time. Anything that I want to remember about that person, I'll use the notes section. So use that notes section with your contacts, like use it all the time as much as you can. Let's see, so that's contacts for you. And of course we all know the normal address book, you can enter it in your regular physical paper address book if you'd like to as well. And you can even enter along the side some of those different notes and things like that. Um, Paula says, I always save this in a to sort folder. I can change the name to to enter. Yeah, I would do to enter because to sort doesn't really tell you what the next step is. That could handle every paper. So the pile on your desk is the to sort pile. You know, the folder to sort is probably not very helpful because that just gives your, your brain the ability to kind of chicken out on figuring out what your next step is. You just throw it into sort and deal with it later which um, kind of defeats the purpose of the action file because then you're just delaying that decision again. And it'll get really full and then it'll become a project and we all hate paper projects, at least I know I do. So if I can stop it from becoming a project where I have to make multiple decisions, then I want to stop it right at the get-go. So yep, I would do to enter, so that way it's not to sort, which is a much more broad category that's not as specific. I don't really know what your action is besides through these papers. I hope that that kind of fills in on the action files, like, I guess, methodology, reason behind it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm making up words now. Uh, 
Yep. So Katie wrote most company names in her context say so and so's mom. That's perfect. I have a lot of, you know, Kelly's mom and Jessica's mom. She likes the so Suzanne likes the context idea. Jana, when she put her phone contact book, she learned to designate service for service providers, doctors, and utilities for all of those. Plus she's put her mom's name in the company name. Uh, when they're hers. Yes, so if you've got contacts for more than one person, I know, Jana, you help care for your mom, you know, your family, your whole family helps care for your mom, but you do a number of things at her house, too. If you have two different service providers because you've got your mom's and you've got yours, then that's a great thing to do, and the company's name right that it's Mom's Plumber. Perfect. Now, passwords. Passwords, um, you can do either paper or paperless. So for paperless, I'll just tell you right off the bat, I love LastPass. I've been using them, I'm going to guess, for a decade now. It's been forever, and I've never had a problem. If you don't want to use, and there's a bunch of good ones out there, I just, I only recommend LastPass because that's what I have the most experience with, and I trust them 100%. There's another, a bunch of other good ones that are out there. It does not mean that they're not good. I just don't have as much experience with them, so I can't confidently recommend something that I've not tried myself and I don't already love. As far as if you have a physical password book or some kind of password sheet, see a lot of people you know, use little books for their passwords. This is okay, but you have to take some precautions with entering passwords in a physical form. First off, you never want to leave it near your computer and you don't want to ever label it anything like passwords because a lot of times when people break into your house they will look for a passwords book or sheet in your office area so you never want to make it something that is easy for them to find or obvious in any way shape or form that's why even with the spark life binder i say don't just put it on your shelf labeled spark life binder label it chemistry notes or quilting patterns or hide it out of sight so that way nobody can find it because you don't want these thieves that have gotten really smart to find your information. So password books, fine. Make sure that they cannot be found. Put them in somewhere weird, labeled in something completely different. If you think it's kind of weird, then it's probably not weird enough because thieves are really smart. And then also I say at least scan your password book every once in a while. I know even with LastPass, every once in a while I download a full PDF of all of the passwords from LastPass in case something were to happen and you know LastPass blew up <laughs> and was no longer available. I doubt that would ever happen. But I want to make sure I don't lose all of my passwords. So once a while, once in a while, maybe once a month, whenever I think of it, I just download the full PDF. I put it on my external hard drive in my office so I've got a backup and I've got LastPass. With your physical passwords, you can do the same type of thing. Just scan them or at least photocopy them and then keep them in another location like a fireproof safe. And just do that maybe every once a month. So that way, if you can't find this, because I don't know how many clients I have had lose their passwords and I've had to help them reset you know, 20, 30, 40 passwords that are the most important that is time consuming, it's expensive, sometimes you never get it quite back right. You don't wanna go through that. So please be careful with your passwords. But with passwords, definitely um, enter them in a password area. As soon as you get them, if you do and make a new password, at least write it on a post-it note and then throw it in your to enter file. Because I know that in the, in the heat of the moment, we rarely capture our password. I've had to, um, one of the things I love at LastPass and you know, I don't make any money from LastPass, but one of the things that I love about LastPass is that when I make a new password on my computer, the little pop-up comes up, would you like to save this? I'm like, oh, thank goodness, yes I would, thank you. Um, or would you like to update it if I've made a change to it? So with passwords, if you've made a change or made a new password, at least write it on a piece of paper and throw that in your to enter folder. So that way you can enter it where it needs to go later. I hope that helps with passwords. Uh, let's check the comments, and like I said, show me some love, some hearts, and some thumbs up, or rewrite things in the comments if there's any aha moments, any thoughts that come up, anything like that. Uh, as far as the contacts, okay, Dottie says that she creates groups. Oh, I love groups and contacts. I need to do it more often. I just don't, but the services and 
et cetera. That's good. And Karen says, is there a charge for last time? I think there's, it might have changed because it's been a long time since I've signed up for it, but I believe there's a free version. When I originally signed up, I think it was like $12 a year. I believe it's gone up. I think it's maybe like $25 a year now. I'm not positive, but of course they've also made it much more robust and it does so much more. You can save notes in LastPass. You can save your credit card information in case you're you know, online shopping and want to fill in forms automatically or need to find it again. Um, I also save a copy of my entire PDF of my Spark Life Binder. That's where I save my extra copy of that PDF so I can access it from anywhere and it's super secure in their secure notes area. So it's like under like super lockdown, you know, beyond government grade protection. <laughs> and I feel confident with that. So I'm not positive of the charge, but it's not a large charge. And I think that they have a free version last time I checked. If anybody happens to know, then just if you'll jot that in the comments for Karen. Um, Susan says for passwords that she never includes the company name, she uses a hint that people would not figure out. That's also good. Um, it's good, but it also you still don't want anybody to come across it. So make sure to still hide that password book because if you use the same password for multiple things, then they're going to be able to figure out that what your likely passwords are. And also they kind of get an idea of your sense of how you think about setting up passwords. You know, do you normally use the same types of words? What's your system? And they, you know, the super smart ones can figure stuff out really fast. And even if they get into an unsecure site, like your gardening site, they can find out information like maybe your date of birth or your mother's maiden name that then can help them get into the more secure sites. So that's really good. Don't include the website address if you're handwriting it, but also still guard it with your life. Um, and I did a whole on my YouTube channel and yeah, on my YouTube channel, because I don't think LinkedIn learning has it live anymore. There is a whole video about creating super secure passwords that you can actually remember because I have a little trick to doing it because last pass, you need a password to get into your passwords and it unlocks all those for you. But that one master password, you want it to be super secure. And there's a fun trick to doing a password that I usually do when it makes me laugh. So look up on YouTube for that one. Um, yeah, and Janice says she has certain passwords with varying additional capital numbers and such. Yep, that's great. Just make sure, again, that nobody finds it because if they see your pattern or if you're just replacing numbers with letters and stuff like that, then it's super easy for them to figure out what your passwords are for some of those sites or find information. So that's passwords. Um, lists. A lot of times with like packing lists or different lists that you would use over and over, I love to use the app for iPhone called Clear. It's C-L-E-A-R. Um, I think it's just, it might be called Clear To Do now, but it's orange with a little check mark. Um, that's my favorite one. They have several other ones. They have one that's really snarky called Carrot, and it will talk back to you and taunt you, which makes me laugh. And it's supposed to be for to-dos, but I can use, I use it for lists sometimes. Also, Google Keep is good for both Android and iPhone. All of these types of lists, though, it's nice to have them on digital if you use them over and over again. Or you can create a bullet journal, which a bullet journal would just be, it's a notebook where you happen to basically have page numbers and you index it. That's the short version of what a bullet journal is. Um, it can get much more complex. Then that, again, on YouTube, I've got a whole video about bullet journaling and how I do my like easy bullet journaling. But you can create a notebook, and you can have a whole section of just your lists if you want to. And if you create an index and page numbers and just index where the what page number your list is on, then you can use that list over and over and over again, and it's in your notebook. I really like to do that for people who don't really enjoy digital. But again, for digital people, I love Clear. It's my favorite one if you have iPhone. And then if you have iPhone, I like Google Keep. And there are just several other ones that are super handy. So let's see if I can. So this is kind of what Clear looks like. These are some of my lists, you know, Christmas card list. I have specific shopping, like shopping when I go to Dollar Tree, shopping when I go to Joanne. So whenever I think of something, I can just throw it on the list. 
I've got repack, so when I'm traveling, I can just put it right on that list of whatever needs to be restocked. I've got packing lists. Uh, I'll, I've got so, so, so many lists. So it's a list app full of lists. Um, Trello, yes. Suzanne says that she likes Trello for project management lists, and she uses that for writing. Trello is really good for lists, too. Love that one. Uh, so that's my deal with lists. Websites, if there's websites that you want to save to visit later, go ahead and throw them into to enter, and then later on, you can always bookmark them within Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer, whatever you're using, Firefox. They all have the bookmarks function. So you can create a folder full of bookmarks based on what type of website it is. A lot of times I like to, if I get a catalog in the mail or see a shopping site that I would really like to learn more about and I don't want the junk mail from these catalogs coming in all the time, I just want to be able to recycle them, they won't stop sending them. Like once you order again, they all start coming again. So sometimes we just have to you know, give that up as a losing battle uh, if, you know, if they keep starting up again. But you can recycle the catalog right away and just keep the websites. That way you can go to the website whenever you're ready to find something like that. And I like to bookmark it within the bookmarks of my browser. It's called a browser. So like right now you're in either Explorer, Firefox, Chrome, or Safari most likely. Those are the biggest browsers. That's all called a browser. And at the very top bar, there's something called bookmarks. And you can save a website address and name it whatever you want right in there. Uh, websites also, if you're doing a bullet journal style notebook, that's a super easy place to do a list of websites that you like to go to. So for example, if you shop at Target all the time, you can have Target, you know, a shopping website page and write target.com. And then just section that out. If you've got page numbers, you can index it. Super easy to have in your kind of your mental storage notebook. Everything that you can brain dump in there is fantastic. And if you've indexed it with page numbers, if you run out of space in one of those parts, that's okay. You can skip over to a different part and enter more there and just make sure that that page number is indexed, which makes it handy. Um, yeah, Suzanne says she's going to try carrot. Oh my goodness, carrot makes me laugh. I, I love things that are a little wrong and snarky. <laughs> <laughs> so Carrot makes me laugh every time. It's a great to-do list. They have a weather app. You can set how mean you want it to be uh, and how much you want it to taunt you. I hope you like it. Yvonne says that she's watching sorting, pulling papers for the spark binder. You're wonderful. Thank you. Oh, yay! I love that you're pulling your spark binder papers, all those important papers and sorting while you're watching. I love multitasking. That's fantastic. Another type of folder that I use, I just thought of, this is another type that I use. This is a massive version of it. I don't see my small one at the moment. I think, is that it? No. Um, I have small versions of this. I have large versions of this. But these are the tool, T-U-L. They also have, you know, I think Circa and Disc and various brands of these little types of clips. You need a special hole punch for them or you have to buy their paper. I just buy the hole punch because it's cheaper. But this is also a great way you can add papers in and take them out of the notebook. Most of mine are not this big. This is for a course that I did. But you'll see it opens like a notebook. And you can pull the paper out easily because it's got a special hole punch. And then you can just stick them right back in. So if you're worried about running out of space, needing more papers, things getting messy in your paper notebook, those are also really good. Just side note, I get off on a, you know, follow the breadcrumbs. So awesome. If you see anything else, like I mentioned, please mention in the comments anything that strikes your fancy, because I would love to know what you're most interested in and what helps you out. So I mentioned important information and data. Since Yvonne brought up the Spark Life Binder that she's pulling important papers right now, um, it just reminded me to kind of hop over to that one. So anytime you have that important information, especially if you're building your Spark Life Binder or something like it, go ahead and put your important papers into Enter when they first come in. So you remember to get them into your Spark Life Binder. A lot of times, um, like I mentioned, when I'm doing my Life Binder, I'll grab the paper that comes in, you know, when I'm going through my To Enter folder, 
And in the back, I also have a folder. So right back here, I have my folder where I can throw papers in that I've not processed yet that need to be entered. Sometimes I do that if I happen to be near the life binder or I can't enter it right away and I need to get it out of the to enter folder, but I don't have necessarily time to do the full uh, filling it out. But most of the time what I do is I just grab that paper out of my to enter folder and I'll go to whatever section it is because I've got them all tabbed out easily and like if I have to go to the financial section, I open that up, I find where I need to enter the information, and instead of opening a PDF and typing it in and all of that, I just handwrite it really quickly. And then that paper for my important papers can go in my to file folder, and it can get filed, or my to scan if I'm going to scan it, or shred if I don't really need it, I just need to enter the information. But I want to make sure to enter it in the Spark Life Binder when it comes up, because the binder should not be a project. This is not something that you want to sit down with and work from beginning to end filling out. That would drive anybody crazy and um, be frustrating. So what I do with the Life Binder is simply as I come across things, I enter them in. So it's simply a process and it fills itself in over time. I think I mentioned yesterday that it took me probably about two years to fill out my Spark Life Binder because I did not just sit down and try to power through. I filled out what I could find when I first put it together. And then as things came in, I started filling things in. So maybe the next time that my homeowner's insurance policy comes in, I write it in my Spark Life Binder and then file it. Or the next time the dogs get their vaccinations, I would enter that information in and then file it. But I don't have to go searching for this information right off the bat. I just entered the most important information in the emergency binder that's the only thing I really searched for information for. And then this one, as it came in, or as I came across it, or whenever I had extra time, I filled in stuff then. And then I typed it in later. So it's not a big project. And the to enter folder is the perfect place to put things as they come in, like that insurance policy, so you remember to enter it in your Spark Life Binder before you then file it. So that's the super easy way. Hand write the information in really quickly if you want to. It's much easier that way, so you're not spending a whole lot of time with it. Oh, there we go. And I think I mentioned that I have a super, super uh, quick, fast, what is it, quick action, fast action bonus that I'm adding on for the Spark Life Binder. If you buy it before the end of the day on Friday, I'm doing a quick video series, these little five minute or less videos on how to fill out your Spark Life Binder, all the FAQs, uh, kind of highlights about each section, how to put it together, and how to do it with almost no time spent. So how to break it down into those super tiny bite-sized chunks and take the pressure off of yourself so you can use it without making a project. You can use it even if you have no time to put together a Spark Life Binder. These little video bites will help you relieve that guilt, get it going, so that way it can be filled in as you go through your year instead of making a big project of it. And that little video series will only be available until Friday. So if you purchase it before Friday or if you've already purchased it, um, anybody who already owns the Spark Life Binder, I'm putting together these videos, you will get it too. But before Friday at midnight, 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, <laughs> you will get that video series. Um, if you buy it after Friday, you won't get that video series. Plus, you'll get, you will still get that Ultimate Papers workshop to go really in depth about how to set up your file system, your actual filing cabinet. I hope that that answers that question. I see comments. I see Debbie says, hi, hello. Nelda just arrived and she will listen to the replay. Yes, welcome Nelda, I'm glad that you made it. Yvonne says, that's an awesome idea. Yeah, there's so many people that feel guilty for not having finished their life binder. I'm like, I took two years. You're already beating me. <laughs> so yes, take the pressure off. Just do what you can as it comes in. Yvonne, I need to get help over the anxiety of not keeping papers. Yes, well hopefully the Spark Life Binder will help relieve some of that anxiety just knowing that your most important stuff you always have. Because if it's not in the Spark Life Binder, it's probably not urgent, quite frankly. You can find the information somewhere else. I will have to talk, um, I'm, I think I'm talking tomorrow, if I remember correctly, 
about relieving that anxiety of those papers that you're just not sure of and you have now to make sure that I talk about it and kind of making those decisions of letting go, the questions to ask to help yourself let go, all of that. You can hear probably I'm using a Sharpie. So I will try to make sure tomorrow in my video for tomorrow, because I'm pre-shooting that one, to address that and help you with that anxiety of not keeping papers, or also the anxiety of letting it go and then worrying, should I have kept it? That's okay too, there's anxiety there as well, and I'm gonna talk you off that ledge so that you feel more confident with your choices. And Janice says, ooh, okay, good plan. She's been struggling with how to collect all the information from the Spark Life Finder. How do you track what info you're still looking for, With miss, meaning missing info? That's a good question, actually, really fast. If you've not already noticed in your Life Finder, just because you asked, um, right behind your table of contents is a checklist. And this checklist is, right now it's two pages long because there's so much stuff that we gather over time for the Spark Life Binder, but as you enter something, just check it off this list. And if it's not a check mark, then you know that's still something that's out there that you need. And you can even keep a copy of this list if you wanted to in the to enter folder. And whenever things come in, you can kind of eyeball against the list, maybe just, um, photocopy it and then update it as you go or keep the original in there if you wanted to. But that checklist is a great way to just see what you're still missing without having to flip through every single page because that would drive me crazy too. Um, yes, Cheryl asked, even those who bought months ago, I'm assuming you mean, are you getting the bonus? Yes. If you've ever, ever, ever purchased the Spark Life Finder, you will get the videos bonus because I will be shooting a bunch of those videos this weekend and then I will keep adding more and more onto that resource for some of the more in-depth parts and you will get that bonus as well because I want everybody to be successful more than anything. That's my goal. You're welcome, Jana. Um, so the last one that I wanted to talk about, the last to enter item is ideas. Now that's something where I feel like, especially us inventors, the inventor types are really bad about this. Counselors, you're pretty rough about it too. But um, I think administrators, you, you have a lot of the ideas, but you're better at compartmentalizing and organizing them. And sometimes you just over-organize them. But uh, us inventors, we're just all over the place and our ideas just like fall out of our brain as we walk. Um, Ideas, you can throw them in your to enter folder if they're not something you're doing right now. If it's something to maybe do later, like Anita called her file folder to consider for the future. If it's an idea for later or just an inspiration, then either if you're not paperless, you can go for a notebook like this, um, well, similar to this, and you know, write out your ideas in here. And if it's like a bullet journal style, like I mentioned, go to the YouTube channel and look for my bullet journal videos to explain more if you don't know what that is. But you can index all the different ideas that you have saved. You might even want a separate folder, not the one that's got your lists and all of your passwords and all your brains, you know, organization. It can just be one notebook for ideas. And if you've got the page numbers and you've got an index about what kind of topics are on what pages, then you can put all of your ideas in this paper system and make it super easy to find again. So then in your index, whenever you're looking for, maybe it's a quilting idea, then you can look up, you know, quilt, wool, thick yarn, um, Afghan, maybe the, on your index you've used all those keywords so that you can help figure out where to find that. Now, if you are paperless, uh, for one, also, if you use a rocket book, it's one of those things that I absolutely love. And again, I've got a YouTube video. I try to answer questions with YouTube videos to explain more, go much more in depth. If you have a rocket book, these are nice too for your ideas. This is one that's erasable. Like you just use a wet sponge and erase the page when you're done. But you can use it to scan and just send that information off into the cloud wherever you decided. So for me, I save ideas in Evernote. Just I like the feel of Evernote for my ideas. It feels a lot more creative for me. That's just a personal thing. You can use Dropbox, Google Drive, whatever your flavor is, they all do the same thing. They capture your information. 
So with Rocketbook, if you wanted to do a paper and paperless, both type of a solution, this, once you scan the page with your Rocketbook app, then depending on where you marked, we'll send it to whatever you've already told it to send it to. So at the main page, you can see, hopefully, well, I don't have it written out in this one. I've got it in my bit larger one, but which is not next to me, I guess. I use it so much. It's probably in my work bag. But each of these different logos, you can assign to a different location. So a lot of times when I'm using it for my ideas, it's different Evernote notebooks. So I've already set the links up in the app, and then I just, when I scan it, it automatically sends it to that ideas section, which is super handy. So bullet up a full paper list if you want to be able to super easy scan ideas to certain locations. Rocketbook is awesome. And then if you're paperless, just Genius Scan is fantastic. That's the app on your phone to scan things and send them wherever you want it to go. Let's see if I have it on this one. Yes, I do. So Genius Scan's logo is like that. I think that there might be a link in the description. I've also got a link for LastPass. But these are just a bunch of things I've scanned. I can just hit plus button. As you can see, it uses my camera looking at me but it uses the camera to scan a document. It'll try to find the edges. And then when you scan it, you can send it wherever you want it to go. So for people who are paperless, if you just want to scan your ideas and send them to Dropbox or Drive or wherever you want to send those ideas, it's nice and easy to find what you need later, especially if you use file names full of keywords. So that quilting pattern, maybe it, you know your file name includes the words quilt, Afghan, um, heavy wool, anything like that that you might search for. So that's what I do with my ideas. You can do the same thing with inspirations and quotes. You can have a whole folder on your computer, or if you're an anti-filer like me, you can have just your general file of all of your files that are digital, and you just use a search to find whatever you need. As long as you've used keywords, it's super easy to find everything. So hopefully that makes sense, and answers some of the ideas of where to store things for your to enter folder. Um, if there's any other types of paper that you're not sure where you would enter that would be in your to enter folder, please feel free. Drop that in the comments and ask me, what do I think about such and such? I can give you whatever ideas. Half of my life is just testing out apps and methods and tools to see if they're worth it, their weight <laughs> and recommend them to people. So that's how I found Rocketbook. That's I've done a review on Evo Planner. Not my favorite, but I will let you know if it's something I've tried out and if it's something I enjoy. Janice says that she loves my ideas. Thank you, Janice. That's awesome. Thank you. And Nelda loves bullet journals. My goodness. I love them too. I don't use them in the traditional ways usually, but I love them. Now, Another thing to do with your to enter folder on the inside sometimes I will put post-it notes or you can even clip You know if you like in your to file I told you to clip the paper policy Or even in a to scan folder well same type of thing in your to enter folder Feel free to make yourself a list of where you've decided to keep the information Because it never fails that you decide all of your packing lists are going to be in the clear app but then later, when you want to find a packing list, you don't remember what app you saved it in. And that's one of the biggest frustrations with digital is trying to remember later where to look. It's not that your information actually gets lost. It's that your brain does not remember where to look. Oh, thank you for the love. I love it. Uh, so what I do is in my to enter folder, I actually write a list of where I keep things. So for me, my ideas go in Evernote. Recipes, if I've tried out a recipe and I love it, then I used to save it to Dropbox. Now I actually just save it in Google Photos. Uh, addresses, I always put them in my iPhone contacts. Passwords, I save in LastPass. Make yourself a list of all these decisions that you've made so your brain does not have to remember where to look and what your process is. And then just post it to the very inside of your to enter folder and it's always there for you. You can't lose your reminder list. Um, I see Karen asked a question in the comments. What would you do with magazine articles you say? I see tons of pictures I might want to paint, decorating, gardening, etc. Great question. Actually, normally I was going to say in your to read folder because magazine articles are to read, but if you've already read it and you're saving it, 
I would use Genius Scan. I would scan it with my phone app. And Genius Scan, you can do multiple page scans. Thank goodness. So when you're done scanning a page, it'll ask you, do you want another page? And you can just keep going until you've got all the pages. And then I would choose either Dropbox or Google Drive or Evernote, wherever in the cloud you want to save it. And I would save it to the cloud because otherwise you'll end up with a file cabinet full of these ideas that then becomes too daunting to find an idea when you are ready for one. So I like paperless for ideas and inspirations and resource articles because otherwise it takes too much time trying to weed through a bunch of articles or you have too many folders in your file cabinet because you've over organized and now your brain does not want to file things because it's too hard because it has too many choices too many decisions to make you've got 50 different choices then your brain has to engage more but if you're going with paperless and you're just using keywords as your file names when you do this and if you're scanning to something like uh, Google Drive, I love Google Drive as well, then I would scan the article, and then my file name would probably be, for example, if it was a gardening tip, it would be article, gardening, um, love bugs, uh, pest control, hibiscus. <laughs> you know, maybe that's the whole thing. Whatever you would possibly, possibly use on your most tired, un, you know, brain uncoordinated day, <laughs> making stuff up again, making up words, um, whatever you could possibly use to look for that article, use all of those words in the file name. Then when you go into Google Drive and you do a search, you can search for a file with all of the words in the file name. So later on, you might go, oh, I want to find out about ladybugs for my hibiscus, if they're going to be helpful or hurtful or harmful to my hibiscus. So you go to Google Drive and you might just Google, you might search ladybugs hibiscus. And then everything that you've ever saved that has the words ladybugs and hibiscus in the file name is going to come up. So you've got a much better chance of finding that article again easily when it's paperless and in something like Google Drive than if it's in your file cabinet. Because in your file cabinet, you've got your gardening file, and now it's this thick, and who wants to go through that? You say just, oh, never mind, I'll just Google it <laughs> and try to find a whole other article instead of looking through what you painstakingly saved. So hopefully that helps. Um, paperless is fantastic for ideas especially, anything and resources, anything that you might have a large quantity of that you can simply search for because otherwise we end up just Googling it. You spend all of this time gathering these resources that you then don't actually use. Uh, all right, so yeah, Karen says, ha I have those huge folders now. Yes, so Genius Scan, you might want a scanning project and also probably look through and purge. There's probably a number of things that you actually don't even care about anymore because you saved them in the heat of the moment and now you realize it's not all that exciting. So scan those babies. Susan, great ideas, I need help with backing up everything. So backing up between having a cloud storage service like Google Drive, Dropbox, Evernote, that's one form of backup because they already have their own backups basically. They use multiple servers so there's a copy on multiple places in case something happened to one. Uh, so I use that for my general backup, but then also I back up my entire computer and anything that I have synced to my computer through something like Google Drive with a program that's called Acronis. Um, it's a little expensive for what it does. I think it's totally worth it. I believe this is the website address. I'm typing that in the comments. But Acronis, A-C-R-O-N-I-S, it's a full backup and it'll do a backup of your entire computer. So the first backup that it does, I mean, it takes like two days for my entire computer to get backed up and all of my synced folders and files. And then it just backs up any changes. Then after that, it's super fast. You can set how often it backs up, does it automatically. Um, so yeah, that's what I would recommend. The easiest way. It's absolutely the easiest way. Uh, is downsizing going through many boxes. This is timely thank you so much you're welcome daddy glad to hear that Karen says me too Linda says me too uh, Katie says you can add tags to a lot of documents now too you can put keywords there instead of in your file name yes and I actually do both sometimes sometimes I'll do it in the file name and then I'll also add it in the tags uh, 
that's a really good one. If you're sending from Genius Scan, then then you have to like go and find the file and then add the tags. So a lot of times I'm way too lazy, quite honestly, <laughs> to then go and add the tags. But I do sometimes add in both, and then I've got kind of a double chance of finding what I want. But yes, I love tags. And then Karen says, thanks, will do. Fantastic. If you come up with any other questions at all, please let me know. Just type in the comments. I'm always here to help. My goal is for you to have this system that just relieves all those piles they never form again. So that's why I start with the action file and focus on that so that you never have the problem come in again. It takes a while to get in the habit. So if you fall off the horse, that's okay. Just hop back on. Right on your calendar, a certain day of the week or whatever it is to at least check your to pay and to do folders. And then that's the only thing that's super important to check. And then you don't have to actually pay and do everything in the folder when you check it. You just have to eyeball what's in there and make sure there's nothing important. So when you see that calendar event, don't go, oh no, I don't want to do my to-dos right now. Just tell yourself, oh, I'm just going to look and see what's in there. I don't have to do a single thing. And then you can even pull out the couple of things that you need to do and put it in front of your action file if you're not going to do it right that moment so you don't forget. But create that habit, add it to your calendar. Uh, the hardest part of the entire thing really is just creating that habit. But if you can get into the whole, like maybe every Sunday morning, you sip your coffee and sift through the to file folder, you don't have to do the to do's, but you actually look and see what needs to be done that week. That's a great habit to get into and you'll be much more confident. You will uh, be calmer, less stressed out. You won't have any piles and you won't miss a thing with your papers. So nothing important will sneak by. Also, whether you're gonna use the Spark Life Binder to keep all that important information or you're going to use a different one, it does not matter. But make sure to keep the important information in one place that's easy to grab in case of an emergency and so you can put your hands on it quickly and so your family can find it in case something goes wrong and you're not there to tell them about it or if you're no longer around, then they don't have to deal with grief and finding all these papers in your file system. It's just the nicest thing you can do for yourself and them. Um, I can tell you right now, I've got that bonus. I told you about the fast action bonus where it's a super fast start to your Spark Life Binder. So it takes no time to set up and I get you started right away and then it's a process. You don't have to make a project of it. You just fill it in as it comes in, put your important information into enter and then enter them when you can. Um, but Friday at midnight, those videos go away. So if you've not already bought your Spark Life Binder, make sure to buy it. And also I still have some seats available in the Ultimate Papers Workshop. So the first 50 people to buy the Spark Life Binder, and I have to go and update it because a couple more people have bought it since the last time I updated how many spots are left. But once I hit 50 people for that workshop, I can't take any more of the the program just won't let me. <laughs> so I can't even squeeze you in if you beg and plead later. So the first 50 people get a spot in that Ultimate Papers workshop, which we will go super in depth about exactly how to um, do your file cabinet. You will learn how to handle things like tax papers, medical papers, how to file those types of things. Um, anything that's like setting up self purging files. So you don't have to go back and purge those folders over and over, there are certain categories that you can set up self-purging files for so they never get overstuffed and full of old stuff. Just everything file cabinet is that Ultimate Papers Workshop. So those are the two bonuses going on right now. First 50 people get the Ultimate Papers Workshop, and then Friday night at midnight, my time, um, that fast action bonus of those fast start videos. Oh. There's my reminder. Um, those fast action videos go away. And there's no getting them back. <laughs> so if you've not gotten it yet, the link is in the description. Make sure to get your Spark Life Binder. Also, with the Spark Life Binder, um, I can tell you there have been a number of times where I get emails from people saying what a blessing this was to them. So for example, I can tell you about Sweet Mary. Sometimes she's on, right now she's not. Um, but Mary, this one time, had somebody who, a horrible, horrible, who worked in the house, and she was horrible simply because she stole her husband's credit card, and he was 
not a, you know, he never used his credit card. He could not even care for himself. That's why she was even there. But she stole his credit card and went on a spending spree with his credit card. And then, of course, Mary finds out later. She found out late at night. And it was too late because, you know, it's already been spent and it was in the middle of the night. So good luck calling anybody. Um, so she was able to, well, first off, she called the police. Very smart. She called the police and filled out a report. But in order to fill out the report, she needed the credit card number. And it was American Express. So the police could not fill out a report about this credit card that was stolen without the credit card number. But she did not have the credit card number because the credit card had been stolen. So she's, you know, I think she said it was like 1 a.m., 2 a.m. She's with the police. They're going over this for an hour. She called American Express. They would not release the account number to her, the credit card number to her over the phone. They only offered to mail it to her because of their security protocol. So she could not even get it from American Express on the phone, even with the police telling American Express that they're there, they still would not release it. Of course, on the statements, they don't put the full number. So she went through about an hour, I guess it was, of looking for this credit card number and trying so hard to find it so that the police report could be filled out and they could catch this person. Because without a police report, they can't do anything. Then it was, she, she told me this because she was laughing. She says, then she finally remembered that she had in the life finder, one of the sections is the financial section, and she had entered the full credit card number and taken pictures of the front and the back, or uh, photocopied the front and the back of the credit cards and had them all in that section, in the financial, financial section. So as soon as she remembered that, she grabbed her life binder, she opened it up, all the information that the police needed was right there. So she could finish the police report and thank goodness they caught the woman. And she, you know, they went through all their processes. She got processed and arrested and all of that stuff, which is fantastic because now she can't do that to somebody else either. But the Spark Life Binder, I've got so many different stories about, you know, somebody in an ambulance and not knowing, you know, an ambulance with their husband. And she did not know all of his medications and all of his information. And she grabbed this as they got in the ambulance and it had all the information there because she was just worried about, of course, him and his heart attack and him dying. So that answered all the questions for her. She just had to worry about taking care of her husband. Um, I've had people pass away and I had the family actually send me an email thanking me for having their mom set up a life binder because she knew that she was dying and she did a massive project of this life binder and she was able to give it to their kids. They had all the information that she wanted them to know all the information to help settle the estate, how to handle her funeral, her wishes were, what to do with the dog, where the dog's vet records were, what's important in the house, all of her important assets, what's the value, where things are hidden, you know, where she had 100 bucks stashed in the house. She had all of that there for them. So they could handle that so much easier and just grieve instead of worrying about searching through things and dealing with the administrative side of somebody dying. So there's so many ways that the Spark Life Binder helps. I want everybody to have one because I've just heard the stories and I've been in the situation myself where, you know, heading to the emergency room, having something like the emergency binder, which is part of the Spark Life Binder, just saved the day. And I can tell you, I don't know how many times doctors and nurses have told me that this is the most amazing thing when I bring this in. They're so impressed that all the information is there instead of their usual experience of a, a patient not knowing some of the answers. I had all the information right there for them. They loved it. So that's me on my little soapbox because I think that everybody needs it just for peace of mind when you know that all of your important information is safe and secure and that you can handle anything, you just sleep better and then you don't worry about your files and your papers as much because you know you have what you need, the rest is just paper. So if you have it or not, it's not as big of a deal. Let's see, in the comments we have, um, sorry, I'm scrolling. <laughs> Karen said that her goal is, when she's done is to look like me, fresh, rested, and stress-free. I think this look is a combination of makeup, 
And the fact that I don't have to worry about my papers anymore because I was not born organized. It took me so many years to figure out how to organize my papers. And um, yeah, not having that stress is so nice. So I hope that you feel fresh, rested, and stress-free when you're done too, Karen. Uh, Dottie asks, what's the cost of the Ultimate Papers workshop? There, you can't buy it separately. It's only part of being the first 50 people to get the Spark Life Binder. So $99 for the Spark Life Binder, and you get the workshop in the video series to help you navigate it, get it set up super fast. And that price, uh, the Life Binder price will go up to $125 after Sunday. So just as a heads up. So you can't buy the Ultimate Papers Workshop separately. Sorry. I did that before in the past, but it filled up too fast. And um, yeah, it was just insane. I had to do a couple of them. And I'm just limiting it to the people who buy. Cheryl asks, do VOP members get the workshop? No, I'm sorry, Cheryl, but the VOP membership is not getting the workshop. And that's mostly just because there's only 50 spots. And I wanted to keep the VOP membership super inexpensive for everybody and at you know between five and seven dollars what is it no five it's five to six dollars i think a month something like that it's yeah it would definitely not be able to um i would not be able to offer it at that price if i were to give away the workshop with that but great question thank you for asking Janice says that she's living the story of all the papers everywhere and she does not want to do that to her son yes Jana right now is going through her mom, um, if you don't mind me telling the basics of it, because you've already posted about it in the group, her mom is no longer able to take care of these things and communicate all of this information to her. So she's in charge of going through the house now that her mom's out of that house and all the papers and finding the information. So yes, Jana, you are, if I wish your mom had a spark life binder for you because hearing about all of your adventures and craziness that goes on is, you know, I, I wish I could make that so much easier for you, but hopefully I could just keep inspiring you and telling you that you're doing an amazing job. And all of you are doing amazing. I have loved so much. Oh, thank you for the love. And I'm giving you love right back. I've loved so much seeing all of your posts and hearing your stories and hearing your successes about, you know, you finished a box and you built your action file and you're building your life finder and all of these things. It's been so much fun. Thank you so much for sharing these things in the group with me because it just lights up my whole day and keeps me going. You're, you're feeding my soul and giving me the energy to keep going with these challenges and keep going with the videos and all of that stuff. So the more you share, the more energy you're just filling up my meter. And it's just, I love it. Thank you so much for everything that you're sharing with me and for following along and working so hard because you deserve so much to have nice surroundings and a stress-free life and a stress-free environment in a peaceful place. You absolutely deserve it. And I want that for you and I want to help you get there. So thank you for following along. Uh, Linda says, a very fair charge for the binder. It seems very complete and helpful. Uh, I've had people ask me why I don't charge more. And <laughs> it's mostly just because I want everybody to have one. It's a download only, so you do have to actually print it out and put it in your own binder, which that way you get it immediately. And you can keep updating it as much as you want to. You can print it off, you know, print off new copies whenever it gets ready or you want to update it because you can type right into the PDF if you want to and print it up or you can handwrite in it, whatever you want. So I'm glad that you think it's a fair charge. I try to keep it low because I really, really, really do want everybody to have a Spark Life Binder. Jana sends her love. Thank you all so much. I love you so, so much. You are amazing and you just light up my day. Keep watching and in the group, I'll be posting even more. Tomorrow's the last day and you've got this. Keep moving forward. Keep taking your little bites and I will see you in the group. I love you. <laughs> Good night.